Well, thank you so much for all your patience, and we'll start in next 15 minutes. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. We have our anamist, our chief guest, Honorable Ms. Justice Hima Crawley, Judge Supreme Court of India. I request our chief guest to kindly come to the dais. I request President Bar Association of India, Mr. Prashant Kumar, President-elect Bar Association of India, Mr. Amarjit Singh Chandog. Uh, I also request our Joint General Secretary, Amarjit Singh Bedi, as well as our Vice President, Mr. Uda Warunjikar, to kindly come to the dais. May I request our President Prashant Kumar to kindly uh, give a flower bouquet to our Honorable Chief Guest as a token of our love. It's a special day today. It's special because of multiple reasons. The first and foremost being, today is the birth anniversary of none other than uh, our very beloved uh, president, former president of India, who also inaugurated our association, Dr. Rajendra Prashad. Just few days ago, while celebrating the Constitution Day, we did remember him. Today being his birth anniversary, we once again remember him and pay our rich tribute to him for his huge contribution to the rule of law in this country, to the establishment of the rule of law in this country. We remember him as a great lawyer, besides being a freedom fighter, who dedicated his life so beautifully by representing the poor and the downtrodden. Anyone who is a student of history would remember the Champaran Satyagraha. I don't think any one of us can ever forget the role that it played in bringing the dignity that it brought to the Indian peasants. And it is Dr. Rajendra Prashad who represented the peasants in various revenue courts on the request of none other than Mahatma Gandhi. It was in fact his initiation to politics to the freedom movement and lawyering in a very different way. And we all know rest is history. For the anniversary, we give him our tribute. And Bar Association of India in 2016 decided to celebrate his birthday as the Lawyers of India Day. Unlike many other days that we all celebrate, and now in the WhatsApp age, we keep forwarding messages of Mother's Day, Father's Day, Children's Day, almost every other day, we thought, why not to have a special day for us? It's important to have a special day for yourself. Nowadays, it has become fashion to say, you know, I need my me time. So today is the me time for the lawyers. For us to congratulate our, ourselves for what we have achieved, a time to reflect and introspect and move forward what we can do. And when we do that in the context of the birth anniversary of a great lawyer and a great freedom fighter, the president of the Constituent Assembly, the first president of this democracy, it can't be any other better day. So therefore, it's a special day, one, for that reason. The, the second reason why it's a special day is we are meeting after two years. We are meeting in the corridors of the court in the hustle and bustle. We are saying hello to each other exchanging smiles, and then again rushing, rushing for our matters to reach, the item to reach, and somehow manage the day and go back. Today is the day when we are here in a very relaxed mode to be with each other and celebrate the Lawyer's Day. After what pandemic has given to us, 
We are aware and we are fully conscious we lost many of our friends and colleagues at the bar. The number is difficult to count. If we remember the COVID phase one and two, I think the number of messages that were coming from various bar associations about the death of our bereavement of our colleagues, it was difficult to handle for all of us. So therefore, I think there was hope. We never thought there would be a day like this when pandemic will struck and life will change forever. Then there was despair, and now we are back to hope. So everybody else talks about every other city or every other group being resilient. We have not seen any other group being so resilient than the lawyers. We had days together when the senior advocates could appear from the comfort of their homes. We had lawyers struggling to find mobile connectivity. We have seen that. Now we have experienced that. I think whatever reality check was needed, the nature gave it to us. We are back. We are back and we are here to celebrate our resilience. So this is a special day for that. I welcome you all wholeheartedly on behalf of the Bar Association of India to be part of this great celebration of life, of lawyering. And we, it is also a special uh, day because uh, we are going to have an award ceremony where not only we'll be felicitating the award is for one year, but it's a bonus. We have got awardees for three years. So we have amongst our midst awardees for the past, this year as well as past two years. Those were stalwarts. When we joined profession, we look up to them that one day I want to be like him or her. They are amongst us. We also have amongst us our law professor. Those who have taught us what is law. So therefore it's special for multiple reasons. I welcome all of you once again to this great evening and this is time now to just move forward and move on and contribute as much as we can to this great profession. May I, before we proceed on today's proceeding, may I also inform that there, there, there is a bereavement in Justice Siddharth Nudul's family, I'm informed, and as such uh, we could not have him today, we definitely miss him. And, uh, but it's my duty to inform you all as to because of the bereavement that Justice Mrudul couldn't be with us today. Um, we can uh, now start the formal event, so to say, because it was my time to speak out my heart and welcome you all. Um, I request our president-elect, Mr. Amarjit Singh Chandok, to kindly come and give his address. Mr. Chandok, please. My Lord Justice Hema Kohli, the President, Bar Association of India, Prashant, Jari, Uday, Amarjit, and my dignitaries of the dais, some of them who have met, I met them after decades. In fact, I have my friend from Kolkata, whom I don't think I met for the last 10 years. And today, look at an occasion to meet him here and to see him with his family also. On behalf of Bar Association of India, I only wish to, I don't want to stand in between you and the president to come in, but to tell you that we are making an endeavor to take India to a larger part of the world, we are making endeavor from Ladakh to Kanyakumari in India. We have now members coming from one top of the country to the bottom of the country, from the left to the right. We are making an endeavor, how do we collaborate with others? And I'm sure my president will say a few words on that. And over and above that, he will tell us that we are in the process of establishing a big ADR center, which under his leadership we will be able to complete and probably announce the inaugural. And that will be the first ADR, if I can call, of the bar, by the bar, and to be managed by the bar. And we are looking forward for that great day. We are looking forward for that inaugural of that, where many of you I find in the audience today mediators sitting across from left to right. 
we are all looking forward for you to put in your best to see maybe the next year's awardee maybe once amongst you that doesn't hold bad for anybody else all of you are entitled to it we all need to collaborate we all need to hold the hands of each other and to see how rule of law gets strengthened in this country and the poor of this country get the what we call justice in our preamble thank you very much for coming we are grateful to you for all of you to spare time grateful to you all. thank you mr chandok now i request our president mr prashant kumar to kindly deliver his address honorable justice hema kohli ji our president elect mr amarjit singh chandyok our vice president mr uday prakash varunjika sorry doctor he has earned a phd not an honorary phd and amarjit singh bedi our joint general secretary our the office bearers and members and all the awardees to whom this day belongs friends first let me start with a personal anecdote just into the finishing of the school when i had passed my 12th standard there was a family hardship and the only thing i could do is to utilize whatever skills i had at that point of time so i worked part time in allied publishers where the project was to publish the select correspondence and documents of dr rajendra prasad around 51 volumes and during the time i was there uh, i worked on around 11 volumes sitting in the national archives taking each letter taking each document and working with dr valmiki choudhury who was the editor and the secretary to the first president so in fact this is what shaped my view about the rule of law about the constitution the process of constitution making and more than that how these very tall personalities which gave shape to this republic what they thought about each other how they debated about issues in their private or official communications how they talked about each other and it is that sagacity it is that will to do public good it is that determination to erect the foundations of a republic what we are today that gave me the path forward to join the legal profession as a first generation lawyer so with that beginning most of us are well aware about the fact that he was the first president of the republic and the chairman of the constitution assembly which drafted the constitution but then there was another very vital role which he played during the interim government between 1947 and 1950 when the nation faced the burning fire of partition and social strife and the administrative machinery had to be put together social harmony had to be brought back and the portfolio which he held food and supplies to make food available to hungry po population and those migrants those duty partition had to come to the side of india 
And with that, there was a very interesting correspondence between him and Dr. Vallabhbhai Patel. And that was relating to Delhi, where Dr. Prasad got a lot of representations that so many Muslim households are having arms. So why Hindus should not be provided with arms and the government should be liberal to provide them arms for self-protection. So Dr. Prasad forwarded this representation with his own note to Sardar Patel. And Sardar Patel replied that it is the Muslims who in this atmosphere who have chosen to stay back have to have sense of security. And it is maybe that factor that has compelled them to keep arms. But till they utilize it against our Hindu brothers, I don't see any cause of any alarm as on today. So let us sit and watch. So that is how, you know, not just through the wordings of the constitution which came later on, the whole spirit of a unified India was visible in the action of these people who laid those foundations. So it is for these contributions and other contributions that we celebrate this day as Lawyers of India Day, where he had, while inaugurating the association, had expressed his sentiments in no uncertain words what he expected from the kind of association which was getting inaugurated on 2nd April 1961. So I will quote from his speech. He said, the tendency now is to confine all appointments to the higher posts in the judiciary to the members of the bar. If the bar is weak, the judiciary will be weak. There can be no question about that. And if we want to have a strong judiciary, we must start with a strong bar so that it can furnish the right type and the right caliber of judges. There is an old saying, Yatha Raja Tatha Praja, which means as is the king, so are the subjects. I think this has to be reversed in a democracy. Yatha Praja Tatha Raja. In a democracy, the rulers cannot be better than the ruled because they represent the ruled and they are selected and elected by those who are raised. They cannot obviously rise very much above their own standards and above their own status. If they are wise, they will select the wise men. If they are corrupt, they will select the corrupt men. And if they are good, they will elect the good men. Therefore, it is that creation of public opinion of the right type amongst the masses amongst the people who have to constitute the government has to be carried on continuously without any break. The bar offers opportunities for its members to help in this matter as much as it can help in the actual administration of justice. I therefore always felt that there is a need for a strong bar and the formation of a bar association like the one that you are going to have is sure to help in development of those qualities amongst the members of the bar, which will also reflect in course of time in the members of the bench when they come to be exclusively recruited only from among the members of the bar. So we not only celebrate this day as his anniversary, we also take it as an occasion to re-pledge ourselves to the task Dr. Rajendra Prasad, while inaugurating the association, had put forward before us. 
And the Bar Association of India, by its very structure, is not a court annexed association. So we are not burdened by so many tasks which a regular Bar Association, which is a member of the Bar Association of India, will have to carry out. So our role is the one to create public opinion, to run programs of awareness, to sustain and enrich and deepen the foundations of the rule of law, democracy, and justice, to bring public awareness, and to see to it that the young members of the bar get better opportunities to learn the high culture of the bar, which is reflected in the high ethics to be observed. So friends, one more thing which I face whenever I am within India and outside India, visiting various states, interacting with the members, is that, you know, what is the Bar Council of India and the Bar Association? So our first and founding president, Mr. M.C. Sitalwar, who was the moving force behind also the enactment of the Advocates Act. So he explained that why the Bar Association of India should be brought into being. So he said, after considerable lapse of time, the demand of the bar for unification prevailed. And as we all know, a bill is pending before parliament, the main purpose of which is to create a common bar for the whole country with state-wise bar councils and an all India bar council at the head. Not only is the bar thus on the eve of being statutorily unified, but the purpose of the pending legislation is to make it almost wholly autonomous and the master of its own house. It was in this setting that the question of the formation of a countrywide organization of the bar fell to be considered. It was felt that simultaneously with the birth of a unified bar in India under the statute, there should also come into existence a nationwide organization of the lawyers for themselves, the achievement of purposes which would naturally be beyond the limited scope of the functions of the bar councils to be constituted under the proposed legislation. The Bar Association of India will in many matters supplement and aid the activities of the statutory bar councils and work in many wide fields which must remain outside the scope of the statutory bodies. So it is with this broad objective that the Bar Association of India was formed. Then I'll just take a minute because you know it is for the benefit of uh, the younger members of our bar. We have our own characteristic problems to the solution of which a body like the one which we have formed can lend a helping hand. We are a newborn democracy striving to maintain the noble objectives enshrined in our constitution at a time when totalitarian governments threatening the very roots of law and the rule of law are increasingly in the vogue. Our governmental regimes have been functioning under the domination of parties with huge majorities and without the salutary control of effective oppositions. These are trends in our body politic which seem to make for authoritarianism and draw us towards the rule of a few. Important decisions affecting public interests are taken not by governmental agencies, but by the parties in power whose dictates seem in turn to be followed by the governments. There is an unmistakable tendency to belittle the functions of the judicial process and indeed to interfere with its operation. A way of students and citizen indiscipline is threatening to affect some of our vital functions. Corruption is set to stalk at large, and we all know how corruption had in many places led inevitably to the rise of power of autocratic forces. It should be the paramount duty of a body composed of men pledged to the smooth in 
impartial administration of justice, and the orderly development of a true democracy to earnestly ponder over these and like situations and take active and energetic measures to counter them in so far as such action may lie within its power. The words which were spoken on 2nd April 1961 ring as true as today as when they were spoken. So now, with this object and agenda, I'll just take further two minutes that, as Anandita had said, that two years we could not hold this function, there was pandemic. But the Bar Association of India utilized this time to build institutional structures and connections. We may be at odds, even criticize, and as an aspirational society, have a right to be dissatisfied with the functioning of our institutions. Because without that kind of restlessness and non-agreement and urge to reform and progress, nothing will move further. But when it comes to the outside world, India sets a different type of example. Rightly or wrongly, we are the largest democracy in the world. We have huge pendency of cases, which is problematic. But if you look at it from the perspective of a nation state, which is a republic for the last 72 years, with such huge population, this pendency causes distress, but it also shows that by and large we are a peaceful society. We are people despite being sometimes completely disappointed by the way the determination of their causes takes place in courts, the delays which take place. But just see, there are no fights on the street. The number of issues which get reported if you look at even from the point of view of advanced countries, the incidents are few and far between. And that is solely because the people have trust in the functioning of judicial institutions. We may have our grievances. We have to move forward. We have to make improvements. But it is this basic trust which the judicial institution holds, and it holds with the assistance of the lawyers and the bar associations. We have to move further to see that this trust is sustained. And that is why the Bar Association has been included as one of the 11 national bars by the World Bank's legal vice presidency as an institution to propagate the sustainable development goal of United Nations, that is the goal 16. SGD 16 for strengthening the institutions. There are total 15 members, and four of them are international bodies, like IBA, Law Asia, uh, UIA, Inter-Pacific Bar Association, and Bar Association of India stands right next to American Bar Association, Law Society of England and Wales, Japan Federation of Law Associations, and the ones who claim to be at the forefront of the rule of law in the world. Because it is our version of the rule of law. It is, we are the best example for the emerging countries who are still stabilizing their governance systems, that we are a good example and we are, have been recognized as such. The second aspect, and this is also the part of the national justice mission of the Ministry of Justice. That is to improve the ranking of India in World Rule of Law Index. There also, the Bar Association of India is now a partner organization of World Justice Project. And what we are doing, not only we are trying to make the evaluation broad-based, we are also furnishing new indices 
on which countries like India and other emerging countries are to be assessed. And one of the factors which I have proposed, which we will be debating after three days in Jakarta, is how independent are the bar associations should also be a factor while determining and evaluating the judicial institution, regulatory institution, and other factors. Apart from that, we have taken the lead in finding, founding the BRICS Legal Forum, and we are in very advanced stages to launch the first project, which is not in the nature of reinventing of the wheel, but to put forward a sustainable ADR. Today, the cost of alternate dispute resolution, especially internationally, is completely unsustainable. And the professions, which are emerging professions with very good professionals, don't get a role to play. So for the last six years, the Bar Association of India, along with other bars, has started this movement to bring in shape a network of the arbitration institutions. Because in each country, if you have your arbitration center, and to compete with the centers in Singapore, in London, in Paris, in New York, it will take decades. So, but if you are able to create a network in which you pool your resources, if you pool your capabilities, if you pool your capacities, and if you bring forward that how we are not satisfied with the current regime. So when in one of the BRICS events, we had the secretary of uh, Ancitral sitting with us. So one of the things I had stated was that, you know, Ancitral has to work with us. Because when the model law was presented to the General Assembly of the United Nations, it was termed as a fair and efficient model law. And efficiency includes cost efficiency. But today, the arbitration has become a branded arbitration, like a Louis Vuitton or a Burberry bag, a symbol of luxury that many cannot afford. And I had pointed out this by prefacing it with a situation that today, every working lady who are breaching new frontiers, for them, carrying a bag is a necessity, a part of their very paraphernalia in the body. And if you say that the only bags on offer are Burberry and Louis Vuitton, then, of course, you are counting people out of the market. So this is the endeavor my president-elect was talking about, and we hope to launch it in the first week of April during our foundation day, when we are expecting at least 15 to 16 who have confirmed so far countries and organizations to come and sign MOUs here at New Delhi. We are hoping to take this number to cross 20 or 25. So that will herald a new beginning for the Bar Association of India as a frontline player, not only to take our own legal profession forward, but take along the legal professions of the emerging world. So with this, I have tested your patience long enough. I will request that we call our chief guest, Justice Hima Kohli, to come and give her address. Thank you very much. Very good evening to all of you. Shant Kumar, Dr. Anandita Pujari, Mr. Chandyok, Mr. Varunjikar, Mr. Bedi, esteemed guests, 
from the legal fraternity, friends from the media, ladies and gentlemen. It's indeed a pleasure to be here today on such a special occasion. I believe that it has finally happened after three long years where programs were being conducted virtually till you have all met in person. And really, though the virtual world has its benefits and we have been witness to it during the COVID, meeting in person, interacting with each other, reaching out to each other, is something entirely different. That warmth that, uh, that one exuberates sometimes cannot come across in a virtual world. It's a pleasure to see so many of the familiar faces in the audience that I'm seeing after long, and I hope to connect with you after the function is over. Coming back to today's special day. In all parts of the world, through ages, lawyers have enjoyed respect, a great esteem as pillars of justice, as preservers of the weak and the downtrodden, as upholders of liberty and freedom. The legal profession has been in the forefront of this country during the British Raj and has contributed in a large way to nurture a fledgling democracy into a vibrant and resilient country where rule of law prevails. The country has seen lawyers in leadership roles during the freedom movement. Just to name a few, Mahatma Gandhi, Sri Raj Gopalachari, Lala Lajpat Rai, Vipin Chandrapal, Bal Gangadhar Tilak, Madan Mohan Malviya, Moti Lal Nehru, C.R. Das and Sardar Patel, Jawaharlal Nehru. What a list of stalwarts we had. They were giants in the profession. They were the ones who led from the front during the freedom movement. There were women lawyers and reformers also during the freedom struggle, like Cornelia Surabji, Mithal Jamshed Lam, and Violet Alva. Out of 348 members of the Constituent Assembly, no less than 215 members were lawyers. Out of 15 women who were part of the Constituent Assembly, one of them, Durga Bhai Deshmukh, was a lawyer. Almost all the members of the drafting committee had a legal background. With the passage of time, unfortunately, the number of lawyers in the parliament have been dwindling. As against 36% of the members in the first Lok Sabha, there are only 4% members who are lawyers in the current Lok Sabha. Lawyers are known to create a law as and when they act as legislators. They are <clears throat> known to present and expand law as advocates. And on being elevated to the bench, they discharge the duty of interpreting and enforcing the law. The role of a lawyer in the society cannot be overstated. They are the go-to persons, whether the problem is within the family, the extended family, or the community, and the larger society. Let's start from the very basics. The moment somebody, a friend, has a traffic chalan and doesn't know what to do, I think the first go-to person is one of us, how to handle it, where to go, how to get that cleared. When there's a property tax issue, some dispute with the civic authorities, it is the lawyer who comes straight to one's mind. When there is an electricity dispute, a dispute relating to construction, a dispute relating to somebody's business, a family dispute. The role of a lawyer is multidimensional. I'm giving small examples. The real examples lie in the larger field of the corporate law, of uh, constitutional issues, of interstate issues, of issues in which a citizen is pitted against the um, BMOTH uh, executive of issues relating to service jurisprudence. In every facet of one's life, a lawyer has a role to play. 
So much that people say and many comment on what, the role, what is the negative role of lawyers. I haven't heard many today, many parents today saying they don't want their children to become lawyers. That is a profession which is in the forefront. Gone are the days when one would talk of only those who were in IITs and those who were doing MBAs and others who were architects and doctors. Today, people are vying to enter the legal profession. In fact, the way the students prepare for their CLAT, it's amazing. They're focused on entering the legal profession. That says much for the profession and how it has reinvented itself over the years. People in my generation were normally not heading to law as the first option. Most of us in that time, so of uh, early, uh, late 70s and early 80s, would look at law as a second option or a third option, or maybe just as a route to take the civil services or go for any other profession, or just as a standby, not really the main focus. The situation has dramatically changed. It is amazing to see how well prepared our young professionals come out of these law schools all set to enter the profession, to make a mark for themselves, and how focused they are when it comes to working and gaining knowledge in the profession. For earning respect of the society, I would think the legal profession then, professional must possess the courage, they must have the character and the intellect. And besides intellect, Lawyers are expected to have a high moral value and a blemishless character. The legal profession is described as a noble profession and placed at a higher pedestal than many other professions. The reasons are not far to see. To maintain a well-ordered society, a lawyer plays a vital role and they instill that abiding faith in the justness and morality of the constitutional order. The growth of the society is ever evolving. Lawyers are no longer confined only to courtroom practice. There are several avenues that have opened up for lawyers in the recent past. What with flourishing law firms that are working on international platforms and expanding areas of law, for example, environmental law, intellectual property act, consumer protection, information technology, cyber law, the power sector, the telecom sector. There are several social welfare legislations that have come up to regulate and keep a balance in the society. As new categories of legal rights are created with new laws being brought out, Lawyers must be able to acquire that multidisciplinary knowledge with expertise in several areas. They should be able to handle subjects as varied as architecture or theater, shipbuilding or sound recording, nanoscience or genome sequencing. It is said that a great lawyer is not one who knows all about law, he is the one who has knowledge of various fields of art and science, who can handle all the subjects that come their way for advice or for taking up matters in courts. Lawyers are indeed fortunate that through this profession, they can gain a deep insight into several other fields in the course of their career by handling a variety of litigations. One of the charges that are leveled against the legal profession these days are that lawyers promote litigation, that they charge a hefty fee, that they do not permit reconciliation between parties for their own personal gains. Nobody can find fault with the profession, with the professional charging a fee that she thinks she deserves. At the same time, to retain the moral stature and regain the losing faith of the public. It is critical for the legal professional to dispel that impression that the client is being ripped by charging an exorbitant fee. 
it is imperative for members of the bar to keep apart some of their valuable time for the underprivileged, for the indigent, for the marginalized, and those who are living on the fringes of the society. Only recently, courts have decided to give weightage to lawyers who have contributed towards legal aid and done pro bono work as one of the criteria for designation of seniors. But to my mind, that should not be an impetus. Lawyers must look out on their own for opportunities to return to the society as they have earned in the profession. Not only that, senior members of the bar, and I just don't mean senior designates, I mean senior members of the bar must lead by example reach out to the junior members of the bar, give them a helping hand wherever possible, give them access to a library if they mostly don't have one, give them guidance on matters when they come for assistance, encourage them to remain in the mainstream. And this is where legal ethics comes in. The lawyer is enjoined not only to discharge the duty towards the court or towards the client, or even the adversary in court. The lawyer owes a duty to the public at large, and lastly, to themselves by attaining a higher professional competence and independence in discharge of the professional duty. We have gathered today to celebrate the Indian Advocates Day and to felicitate lawyers and jurists. I understand that the Bar Association of India has been celebrating this occasion on an annual basis for several years. It is indeed my privilege to attend this function and recognize the contribution of leading lights from the profession who have accomplished the role in as much as, not only as legal practitioners, but also as votaries of continuing reforms in legal education, of expansion of the role of law to ADR, to development of civil and criminal law, the whole field. I must congratulate all the members of the Bar Association of India and the trustees for continuing to play an active role in the promotion of rule of law for the past 63 years. When we gathered at such occasions to recognize the professionals, the leading professionals in the, prof in the legal profession, it is to remind us that a strong bar makes a strong judiciary. I conclude by quoting John W. Davis, a former Solicitor General of the United States who said about lawyers, and I quote, true, we build no bridges, we raise no towers, we construct no engines, we paint no pictures, unless as amateurs for our own personal amusement. There is little of all that which we do, which the eye of a man can see. But we smooth out difficulties, we relieve stress, we correct mistakes, we take up other man's burdens, and by our efforts, we make possible the peaceful life of men in a peaceful state. Thank you. Thank you, Justice Kauli, for that uh, very insightful sharing of thoughts. I'm reminded of one of our past president's very um, concerned conversation with me once. It was Mr. Neil Divan. Uh, while a very honorable judge of the Supreme Court was retiring, I received a phone call from his landline. And he asked, uh, Anandita, I had a question. Can you tell me whether the, I'm about to write a letter on his retirement. Can you tell me whether he treats juniors well? I said, yes. Does he treat the lawyers, all the lawyers well? I said, yes. I said, okay. And he kept the phone. Again, I dialed back. I said, but why is this question to me? He said, no, I wanted to have the authentic information from the junior members of the bar because these are the two tests that I have. A judge, of course, has to be very, very erudite, must be knowledgeable in law, must give deliver justice on time, must write beautiful judgments. Uh, but at the same time, these are the two tests that I have set for myself. Every time a judge retires, 
I ask it from the bar, and if I get correct feedback, then I immediately sit down to write a letter. So with this, I write a letter to the judge who is retiring. So I think with that golden standard that Mr. Anil Divan had shared with me, ma'am, it has always been a privilege and an honor to be appearing before you because ma'am has always been very um, uh, gentle but very firm. And I think in today's speech also, we got reflections of that. Thank you so much, ma'am, for accepting our invitation and being there with us on this special occasion. Now I would like to request our Vice President, Mr. Uday Prakash Warunjikar. He's also a member of the Bar Council of Maharashtra and Goa to kindly give the concluding remarks. Thank you, Dr. Anandita Pujari. The Justice Kohli, Judge Supreme Court of India, all dignitaries on the dais, of the dais. And really speaking, my job is much simple because of the words which we received today from Justice Kohli. While concluding, while offering a concluding remark, I must say, Madam, we have around uh, 23 or 24 lakh lawyers in the entire country. But this is that unique function when we are celebrating, we are felicitating those Indian legal brains, not only from the profession, but apart from that, the academicians are also here. Apart from that, you will find that the persons who are in the non-litigation, they are also here. And therefore, I can say as a concluding remark that this is one of the gathering which represents the best Indian legal brain in the country. And today, and today on this occasion, this is the largest voluntary body of Indian legal brain which is offering these awards to these distinguished guests who are present here. Justice Kohli expected that uh, lawyers should return to the society all these guests, all these awardees, they have laid an example before the society how they are doing. And I'm sure they will carry this message further and they will follow the path which uh, Justice Kohli expected. She expected that uh, all our uh, lawyers, brothers and sisters, they should have different qualities like courage, like character, intellectualness, so that the profession can become a better noble profession. I'm sure there are large number of uh, academicians who are from 1,500 law schools spread throughout the country. All of them are teaching the same principles which Justice Kohli reiterated today. We are really thankful, Justice Kohli. I must say, I'm following the same, I would like to sing the same tune which our president-elect uh, started. This is your function. All those invitees, all those guests, all those awardees, this is for you. And therefore, I'll have to cut short my concluding remark by saying that this is that encouragement which the Bar Association could show, but you are our inspiration. You are our future, and I'm sure, based on your contribution which you have given to our Indian uh, legal fraternity, I'm sure there will be much more different, different uh, inspirational stories which will be written in the next few, few years. Our president-elect also made a reference that all those young participants who are sitting here, one day they can also aim that they will be sitting in the first row and we will get an opportunity to give this award to all of them. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Warunjikar. Now is the time to felicitate all the awardees, the Lawyers of India Day awardees. Uh, we will start with 2020, because that is where we left. So therefore, I request all the awardees of 2020 to kindly um, receive the award. It's a small gesture from the Bar Association of India to thank you for being part of this great profession, 
for having contributed to this profession. Thank you. Uh, for the year 2020, the name of the awardees was announced in a virtual event where everybody was present. However, we once again meet together to uh, give away the awards. We have amongst us Ms. Pallavi Shroff, managing partner, Shardul Amarchand Mangaldas and Company. <laughs> Madam Shroff, please kindly co come to the dais. Ms. Pallavi Shroff does not require an introduction. However, as a matter of formality, let me read out. Ms. Pallavi Shroff is the managing partner of Sardul Amarchand Mangaldas and Company, and she heads the dispute resolution practice in the firm. She took over as the managing partner in 2015. Her areas of practice include competition law, energy and infrastructure law, natural resources, mergers and acquisition. Her contribution to the framing of the competition law of this country is too well known. She has been appointed as a member of the BRICS Women's Business Alliance, besides many other committees and commissions that she has been part of. Thank you so much, ma'am. We have with us Shri S.K. Kapoor, senior advocate. I must also acknowledge the presence of Justice Ravi Kapoor, Mr. S.K. Kapoor's son, who is also present with us. Um, Shri S.K. Kapoor graduated in law with honors from London University in 1963 and was called to the bar by the Honorable Society of Lincoln Zine in November 1963. He joined the chambers of late Sri Subimal, Sri Roy, and Sri Milan Banerjee, and thereafter Sri Dipankar Ghosh. For a brief period between 1965 to 71, he has also taught at St. Xavier's College, Calcutta. He was appointed as an additional Solicitor General of India in 2004. He has extensive corporate law practice experience. Thank you so much, sir. We also have with us Professor Dr. Kamles P. Joshipura, former Vice Chancellor, State University, Gujarat. Professor Joshipura has been Vice Chancellor of two state universities of Gujarat for three terms. He was recently nominated as the governing body member of the Nehru Memorial Museum. He is part of the task force constituted by the government of Gujarat to implement the national education policy. He played a dynamic role in streamlining the administration um, of legal education in this country. Thank you so much, sir. Among the 2020 awardees that we do not have today with us, but they have conveyed their best wishes are, and those who are present in 2020 when we celebrated virtually, are Mr. C.S. Vaidyanathan, as well as Mr. Uday Hulla, both very learned, very erudite senior advocates from Delhi and Bangalore. We all know them. They need no introduction. We also acknowledge uh, them on today's occasion, although they are not present here to receive the award. For the year 2021, we have amongst us Sri Kapil Dev Sooth, senior advocate. Sri Sooth has contributed immensely to the, bar, to the bar in the state of uh, Himachal Pradesh. In fact, on the uh, occasion of virtual presentation of award, to acknowledge his contribution, Justice Deepa Gupta, former Judge Supreme Court, was also present voluntarily. Mr. Sooth is actively associated with various socio-cultural activities besides contributing immensely to the bar. For the year 2021, we also have Ms. Minakshi Arora, Senior Advocate, Supreme Court. Ms. Arora completed her matriculation from Assam and thereafter, after doing her studies from Delhi University and as well as Baroda, she joined the bar. She was an AOR. In fact, the other day she, had a, she did mention her role as an AOR in the court. Uh, she is a designated senior, designated by the Supreme Court of India. She has been representing many important uh, clients, including the Election Commission of India, for a very long period of time. Most importantly, her contribution to the 
framework of the sexual harassment prevention laws in this country in the Vishaka case is immense. Thank you, ma'am. Amongst the 2021 awardees are those who are not present today. However, they have again conveyed their messages to us. Um, are Mr. Ranjit Kumar, former Solicitor General of India, as well as Mr. R. Venkat Ramani, the present Attorney General for India. Uh, the Attorney General for India uh, uh, is now out of Delhi, and I, both of them have conveyed their um, messages that uh, they, they, they're really going to miss this occasion because they were both virtually present. They are very much a part of an integral part of the Bar Association movement as well. In fact, we are missing the poem that the learned attorney general every time shares whenever he's absent. Today, he could not send that. So that message also came that kindly excuse me for not sending a poem to be read out on this special occasion. Amongst the 2021 awardees, we also had Professor Dilip Uke. Uh, may I request our Vice President, Mr. Warumjikar, to kindly receive the award on his behalf. Professor Uke is the Vice Chancellor of Maharashtra National Law University, Mumbai. And he is also, he also happens to be the PhD supervisor of the of Mr. Warunjikar. He has served on number of national bodies like UGC, NAC, UPSC, State Public Service Commissions, etc. Now is the time to announce the names for the 2022 uh, Lawyers of India Day Awards. We have amongst us Sri Jaydeep Gupta, Senior Advocate. <laughs> Sri Jaydeep Gupta, Senior Advocate, he is practicing constitutional and commercial law for the past 30 years in Supreme Court and High Court. Besides the bio data which is written here, I would also like to mention there is something special about this award. One of the first awardees of this Lawyers of Day India Award was also his father. So this is one of such rare father-son duos that we have. Of course, the daughter-father duo had already received award when Mr. Soli Sorabji and Ms. Zia Modi received the award a few years ago. Thank you, sir. We have amongst us Sri J.P. Singh, Senior Advocate. He's practicing in Delhi High Court as well as in all other courts and tribunals in Delhi. He has pioneered the mediation movement in India and he was appointed the founder organizing secretary of the Delhi High Court Mediation and Conciliation Center, also known as Samadhan. Thank you so much, sir. We we have with us Mr. M.G. Ramachandran, senior advocate. I think whenever we talk about electricity law and infrastructure law, there is no way that we would not remember, sir. In fact, his long association of, uh, with BI, I would also like to acknowledge that. His senior Sri RKP Sankar Das was also one of our past presidents. Sir has immense contribution to the electricity, electricity law, the framing as well as the litigation part of it. Thank you so much, sir. We have with us Sri Mohit Mathur, a third generation lawyer and a leader of the bar. He again needs no introduction. He was designated. He was designated as a senior advocate in 2015 and he has last, in the last 31 years, he has proficiently handled various kind of cases in Supreme Court, in High Court and various other forums. His father, I, I must also recognize that his grandfather was part of our, the first executive committee of the Bar Association of India. So we are celebrating legacy in that sense. Uh, the next awardee is our very own Ms. Rachna Srivastava. She is also the head of the Bar Association of Women's Lawyers Forum. She has uh, been a general secretary of the Bar Association in the past. Uh, in that sense, she is my predecessor. She has contributed a lot. She has handled government cases 
and has been representing the state of Uttarakhand for more than 20 years before the Supreme Court. And then the Law Academicians Award. I'm most happy, not that I was any less happy when I was announcing other names, but as students, all of us, including the awardees today would agree with me that we are very happy to acknowledge the great contribution of our teacher, Professor M.P. Singh. We have all read his book. We have all, most of us from Delhi University have been his students. Thank you so much, sir, for being here, for accepting our invitation to accept this invitation, uh, this award. Thank you, sir. His biodata runs more than 50 pages, so I would not commit the mistake of reading that. I think his name is enough. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We all, absolutely, we all have constitutional law. We and Shukla's constitutional law by Professor M.P. Singh. I think we all have read it. We all, all have it in our library. It's truly an honor to have you, sir. I would like to request our awardees uh, to kindly uh, give you a response. Well, it will be lovely to hear from you. So from the, if I can go batch-wise, I'm sorry I'm doing this, but if we can go batch-wise, from the 2020, we have Ms. Pallavi Shroff with us. If ma'am is still there, she was. Ma'am, kindly. Ma'am, you can come to the dais, ma'am. This is Hikma Kohli, uh, Mr. Amarjit Chandyok, Mr. Varunjikar, Mr. Amarjit Bedi, uh, Mr. Prashant Kumar. Uh, I want to thank first on behalf of my, for myself and for all the awardees of 2020, a very special thank you for selecting each one of us to receive the award, to think that each one of us was worthy of this recognition. It is indeed an honor and with honor comes responsibility, and we have to accept it with humility. So on behalf of all the awardees for this year, I accept these award with great humility and with a sense of responsibility that us awardees sort of become role models for others in the profession. And with that, I think we owe a lot more. I think today in the corporate world, we speak a lot about diversity and inclusion. It's become one of the key themes that we speak about, whether at, um, in events, corporate conferences, or even at the board level. And I think we see here today, and today is a testimony to that, of the diversity and inclusion in the legal profession. Um, I can say one thing, when I started, we were about four or five of us in the legal profession. I can see ma'am here, Zubeda, me, and a couple of others, we were there, Geeta Mittal and others. And today, it's such a delight to be in court and see so many young women get up and argue, be so confident. And I think that great you know, move that we've made in accepting women lawyers and giving them the respect that they deserve, I think, is a huge step. And I think that movement has been led by the women judges and other judges from the bench in respecting the women lawyers, encouraging them, and you know, giving them the wings that they really needed. And I have to thank the judiciary for this. Um, it's a huge step forward. I think when we talk of diversity and inclusion, we already speak of only women, the gender diversity and inclusion, but there is a lot more in diversity and inclusion, and we need to take further steps in that direction, whether it's a sexual orientation, whether we talk of the LGBTQI++, all of that, I think, becomes relevant. How many of us in our chambers or in our law firms are willing to hire somebody we know is from a different sexual orientation, somebody who's a transgender. 
Do you know how to address the person? The sensitization of all these things is a huge issue. And I think the burden lies on us to take that agenda forward, on each one of us to take that agenda forward. And I would urge all of you to you know, take this agenda forward and do it. The other aspect we've sought through is mental wellness. I think even the Supreme Court has recognized this whole concept of mental wellness. It's not an ailment that you don't talk about. It's something that happens to a lot of us. Acceptance, talking about it, the Supreme Court setting up centers for this, I think is such a huge movement and acceptance of this disease that kills so many people or ruins the lives of so many people. And thank you, uh, ma'am, for recognizing this aspect. COVID saw this at its forefront. And I think all of us had to do a lot of work even in this area. This is another agenda that I would think we all sitting here could take forward and you know, with the assistance, we have so much support from the judiciary on this. I think we should all play our little bit to do that. And ma'am, the third thing you said was giving back to the country, giving back to society. I think one clear way we can do that is the pro bono work and the judicial. But there are some of us who do it in a slightly different way, and that is when the government is setting, doing <coughs> legislations, we get invited to collaborate with the government to work with them to create a world-class legislation. Uh, you know, so this is sort of an activity that if we are invited or any of us here is going to participate, gives back to the society, we get a better legislation than just you know, something coming down our way and we don't like it and we are in court challenging it. So I think there are different ways that we can collaborate and give back to society and I think that's a huge thing. Ma'am, thank you for all those words. Thank you, ma'am. Our president prefers calling this award as the Oscars of the legal field. So here comes the acceptance speech of, may I request Mr. S.K. Kapoor. Rehanji, if you can just hand over the mic to sir. Justice Kohli and all the eminent personalities on the days. I'm undergoing a sense of shock and bewilderment. So I will not go into many aspects of the matter. But my gratitude to the Bar Association, I must express. And also to the members of the days. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. Now, Professor Joshi Pura, please. Esteemed dignitaries uh, sitting on the dais, Honorable Justice Hima Kohli ji, <coughs> Salman Nia Prashant Kumar ji, Amarjit Singh sahab, <coughs> Salman Nia Uday sahab, Anandita ji, <coughs> Amarjit Singh sahab, my senior colleague, in every respect, is a guiding force for us, Professor M. P. Singh Saab, and uh, dignitaries sitting on the of the dais also. So I would like to express my sincere gratitude to the jury for this award, office bearers of the Bar Association of India for conferring this prestigious award on me. Really today, <clears throat> I must say apart from this Lawyers of India Day function, the emblem I was reading, Dharma Sanstha Panarthaya, a famous quote from Bhagavad Gita. And today is a Marga Shirsa Ekadashi, that is uh, Gita Jayanti. So, <clears throat> on a very auspicious day, 
we have organized this function. Uh, <clears throat> I will not take much time, but I would like to highlight that after the gap of almost 35 years, the national education policy has been announced. Categorically, it is the national education policy, not the new education policy. And it has considered all the, <clears throat> it's very significant to mention that uh, the commission has considered all the past recommendations, even for legal education, first committee 1855 Muthu Swami to last our parliamentary committee. Prashant Kumarji, legal education has been excluded <coughs> from the detailed discussion from policy perspective view. So now, it is up to us, it is up to Bar Council of India, it is up to Bar Association of India <coughs> to frame a curriculum and the syllabus in tune with the national education policy. Thank you very much. I am very much aware that I have yet to attain the level <coughs> that eminence of the past awardees also, I will try my level best one day matram. Thank you, sir. From the 2021 batch, may I request uh, Mr. Kapil Dev Sood, please? Honorable Justice Kohli, Sri Prashant Kumar, President of the Bar Association, Sri Tindo, all the dignities honor of the dais. I'm honored and privileged to receive this award and I feel humble. Uh, but I say that this entire will be because of the what I was taught by my father, senior advocate Lala Machan Sood. When I joined the profession there in 1962, he told me that it's all being said that it's an overcrowded profession. But there's always room at the top to why you work hard, sincere to yourself, to your clients, to the profession, and to the court. He also told me that shortly you'll be have enough money for your needs, but also for your luxuries. But you must keep apart about 25% of your income for philanthropic activities. And if you do that, that will be the best that you can return back to society. And I have been trying my best to do that. And I think this recognition which you have given to me is the result of that. Thank you, I will suggest to all the members, the younger members, to, to rise. You, you have to work hard and have to be sincere to the profession, your client, and also the court. Aminakshi, ma'am, please. Um, uh, Justice Seema Kohli, Mr. Prashant Kumar, Mr. Chandyog, Mr. Varunjikar, Anandita, Mr. Bedi, and my colleagues and esteemed guests here. The only thing that I can say is I'm extremely overwhelmed. Uh, for someone who came to this city with one suitcase, lived in a working women's hostel, clawed my way up to be an AOR, today is indeed not only an extreme honor, it's overwhelming, and I'm extremely grateful to you. I'm really indeed grateful to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. From the year 2022 list of awardees, we have Sri Jaydeep Gupta ji. Justice Hima Kohli, 
the president and <clears throat> other officials of the Bar Association of India on the dais, and there are many more in the auditorium today. I cannot express how happy I am and how grateful I am for this award. And it is uh, indeed daunting that when you first instituted this award, the first batch included not only my father, but Mr. Fali Nariman, Mr. Soli Sorabji, Mr. Ashok Desai, and Mr. Anil Diwan. So, my Lord, uh, so what I feel is uh, humbleness at the fact that this year I am privileged to be holding this award in my hand. On this occasion, since it's an Advocates Day, and since there are a lot of young lawyers in this hall, I would only like to make one point, and that is that the Advocates Act gives us a monopoly, a monopoly for the practice of law. We are the only people who are allowed to do it. With this monopoly comes a huge duty, a duty to be the bridge between the common citizen and the legal structure. And this duty has to be performed fearlessly. In today's world, where so much more of the law is discussed in the newspapers, in the media, by all persons from all walks of life, we are the people who have to explain and bring it to the attention of people that what is the correct position. If somebody makes a statement in the press which is not correct, it is our duty to bring it to their attention in some form or the other. One of the aspects of Bar Association of India, which I find most remarkable, is that whenever there is an event of importance or interest across the world in the legal profession, the Bar Association of India promptly responds. It gives a response to every occasion. Whenever there is a lawyer who is in trouble in Sri Lanka or a pronouncement in an African nation or anywhere in the world, there is a declaration immediately by the Bar Association of India discussing it, giving their views and trying to educate the public as far as the incident is concerned. Thank you very much for making me part of this movement. And from today, of course, my responsibilities are that much higher. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. Now we have Sri J.P. Singh Ji. My Lord Justice Kohli and the dignitaries on the dais and off the dais, when Minakshi talked about her journey, my journey began in a very small town in Dhanbad. And it's been a long journey from Dhanbad to New Delhi. And today to be standing amongst, before you, is really humbling. It's a huge honor for me to receive this award. I'm deeply beholden to the committee for nominating me alongside the great stalwarts of our profession. I've gone through the brochure and the names that were just now announced. And some of whom you are present also in this August gathering and who stood at the podium here in the past to receive this award is actually a very humbling experience. And I think I really don't know anything about the profession today, standing here, you know, when I compare myself with these names. I thank God who bestowed on me the grace and the honor to receive this honor here. My parents for educating me and inculcating values which are so dear to a mediator. My wife and family for bearing with the long hours of my absence, which were devoted to inculcating skills of a mediator and a trainer, and building patience to listen to the participants during long mediation processes and to bring peace in the lives of those people. My colleagues who have always encouraged and motivated me, and finally, my guru in this profession and my mentor, a role model for me, Mr. Amarjit Singh Chandyo, who has taught me the virtues, who has taught me the virtues of perseverance and hard work, 
And at this stage, I'm reminded of words of John Mintel in his poem when he said, they also serve who only stand and wait. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. Now we have Mr. M.G. Ramachandran, please. Continue with what Mr. Sorry, Honorable Justice Pakuli uh, and Dignity. J.P. Singh said, when I received the letter from Anandita, I didn't know what, what I did in the profession all this year to be recognized. I joined the profession in 1975 and uh, the chamber of Mr. Shankar Das. At that time, I've seen the Bar Association work. The amount of hard work which he had to do in the Bar Association, I believe the office bearers are putting a lot of hard work to bring various aspects of the Bar Association. I, I really thank for this uh, recognition. I'm humbled, as he said, and uh, I wish the Bar Association many more success. Thank you very much. Honorable Justice Kohli, Mr. Prashant Kumar, my always president, Mr. Amarjit Chandok, though he may be president-elect here, but the time I served as the secretary to the Bar Association with him, perhaps that's the reason why I am here. Anandita Udayji, Mr. Bedi, and uh, all the honorable members here, and the dignitaries, Professor M.P. Singh Saab, whose classes on paper I attended, most of the time I was out. That's why I suspected whether that letter was a prank and the month was April. <laughs> Did I really deserve this? I doubted, but then I thought perhaps the jury was uh, swayed by Chandok Saab, who is the president-elect, so they, 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 they succumbed to his request that my secretary be also honored. In fact, I'm really not used to getting these awards because I never considered myself anywhere near this galaxy. Though Bar Association of India, I just mentioned, uh, Anandita also mentioned, the link that I always shared with Bar Association of India was that my grandfather also was a part of the first executive committee in 1959-60. So I always thought that there is something which was really very big and someday, I just would want to be associated with it. Never knew it would come so soon when I got this letter. And I can only say, as JP sir also mentioned, and Minakshi also mentioned the long journey. My journey was perhaps ended, it used to end near the courtrooms and near the classes, never went inside much. And in the courtroom also, I was, I thought I was considered an aggressive, cantankerous lawyer, not willing to give up. Didn't know that perhaps some jury someday might find it worthy enough to be given an award. So I can only say thank you to Bar Association of India. Thank you for considering me amidst this galaxy and with the names that I read in the brochure, perhaps all the adjectives of being humbled or being overwhelmed, even those adjectives fall short. 
It's a great, great, great honor, and I really cannot tell what's going on in my heart, how I felt, how I expressed that to my father, who unfortunately, because of his uh, ill health, could not be here. But he was so much wanting to know what happens. And when I saw the videos, I was uh, really tempted that post this function, I will ask Prashanji if I could be given a, some kind of a pen drive or soft copy of it, so that I could show it to him that this is where your father collaborated and your son got awarded. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, sir. Um, Ms. Rachna Srivastava. Honorable Justice Kohli, Mr. Prashant Kumar, President, Mr. Chandyo, the President-elect, Dr. Varanjikar, Vice President, Dr. Anandita, Secretary, and Mr. Bedi, Joint General Secretary, all the dignitaries present in this hall, my future colleagues who are also sitting here, and the budding lawyers, ladies and gentlemen. As a last speaker, generally in the courtroom, we say we'll adopt the arguments of the previous counsel. So I will also adopt the suggestions and response made by my previous uh, speakers, awardees. But uh, coming to myself, I'm really extremely touched and overwhelmed when, um, while receiving this award. In fact, then I was contacted and uh, was informed that I am being selected for this award. I really thought, do I really deserve it? Because the first award function, uh, it was a galaxy of lawyers. Do I also fit in that galaxy? But since the jury has decided that maybe um, I do find some my place in that uh, galaxy, I'm really thankful to you all for conferring me this award. Though I am the fourth generation lawyer, but it has not been easy. First, gen first female lawyer in the family. It was, I think, with the determination of my, my mother, encouragement of my father, and support of my family, my sister, their spouses, and their children. Everybody supported me. That has made me to achieve this, uh, to this uh, level that I was, that I am being considered and I was considered for confirmation, confirmation of this award. I'm really thankful, thankful to you all. Thank you, Bar Association of India, for giving me this recognition. And in the end, I will again say that I adopt all the <laughs> suggestions and the response given my previous speakers. Thank you so very much. Thank you, ma'am. And now, Professor M.P. Singh, please. Justice Kohli and uh, all the members on the dais. It's uh, when uh, Andita called me a few days back that uh, whether I would be available for this occasion. Uh, when there are invitations from the students, I never say no. So this time also, without making any inquiries as to what kind of function it is, I agreed to come. And I'm glad that I came and uh, came in touch with many of the persons who I have never seen, uh, or could have never seen, or could have never met also. It's a great pleasure for me that uh, in the midst of the lawyers who are actually the diamonds of 
legal profession. Uh, I have been also honored. Uh, Shukla's constitution, which I have been revising, uh, normally gives me some kind of recognition, but uh, I am waiting to see if I could produce an independent work on constitutional law. Let me hope that one day it should also be realized. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Um, listening to all the awardees, one thing is for sure, that we should stay aspirational. We should dream big. It is possible. I think all of us, many of us, came from very, very small towns, including me. Um, but we got uh, collaborations, associations in the corridors of the court. They held our hand, our seniors encouraged us, and we didn't realize how the path became so smooth. And that might be the story of all of us, whether it was a first generation lawyer or a fourth generation lawyer, without collaboration and encouragement and support from our colleagues at the bar, it wasn't easy. And without the education that we got from our teachers, it, we would not have been initiated at all. So thank you so much. Thank you to all the awardees for inspiring us. Now I request our Joint General Secretary, C. Amarjit Singh Bedi, to give the formal vote of thanks. But before he does that, I would uh, request him to kindly pardon me, because I could see in the hall our members from all across the country. So I must acknowledge that we should not forget or should not by mistake not mention. It's important, because our friends from Assam Right at the back, um, from Gohati, Shillong, they have come to attend only this function. We are friends from Gujarat, here. We are friends from Karnataka. Yavli sir is not raising hand, but I know. <laughs> we are friends from Telangana bar present here, right? And uh, if I'm forgetting any other bar, please kindly, uh, I hope Mr. Bedi covers that mistake of mine. But we have friends from all, all over, from across the country, those who are present here, of course, from Delhi, uh, as well as from Uttar Pradesh. I can see those smiling faces from there. So those who have come just to be part of this celebration and meet their friends. So thank you so much for coming here. Now it's to Mr. Bedi to pro give the formal vote of thanks. Uh, it gives me immense pleasure and honor to give the vote of thanks uh, on behalf of Bar Association of India. And I'd like to start by thanking Honorable Justice Hima Kohli for spared her valuable time to come here, give us this honor, give recognition to the awardees, and give such an inspirational speech. I'm sure all of us have learned something, and we are inspired by her. And we aspire to do better in our profession. That's what it is all about. A recognition for us lawyers, our dedication, our hard work, are being recognized today. So I'm really thankful to her. We are missing Justice uh, Siddharth Mridul today. Had he come, it would have added to the grandeur. But uh, as uh, my colleague Anandita has informed, there was a bereavement in the family. So we are missing him today. I'd like to thank our president, Shri Prashant Kumar, under whose initiative, after a gap of almost three years, we are having this gathering again. Uh, I'm really sorry we, had, we didn't expect so many of our colleagues to come today, and we didn't anticipate we didn't have enough seats, actually. It really gladdened me from inside, but I also apologize that we didn't have enough uh, chairs for all of us, and somebody had to leave also, or some of them had to keep standing. So uh, really, it was an amazing gathering today, I, I must say that. Thanks to our president. Uh, I'd like to also thank our president-elect, Sri Amarji Singh Chandyok, my <laughs> namesake, in that uh, for not only driving us to have this grand program today, but also uh, representing the bar in inviting Honorable Justice Hima Kohli and Justice Siddharth Nidul, whom we missed today. Uh, I'd like to thank Anandita, our general secretary, for who worked tirelessly, because this program, as we see today, is not what happened in a day, but complete efforts to work with the jury, shortlist 
the awardees look at their profile means the entire exercise done by our general secretary here. Uh, I like to thank our vice presidents who all helped, who decided, who, who were part of the jury selection, especially Mr. Yakesh Anand who is present here today. Uh, we have other vice presidents, or some of them are missing. I like to thank our governing council members, especially who have come from outside uh, Delhi. Our state secretaries, uh, Mr. Abhay Prakash Sahai is here. Bhavna Joshipra from Gujarat is here. Uh, uh, from Abhay Pratap Singh from uh, Haryana is here. Soumya Jeet Pani is here from Odisha. Mr. Santil Kumar is here from Tamil Nadu. Uh, Mr. Amit Korpal is here from UP. We have uh, uh, Mr. Puneet Sharma, Mr. Ak Akash Kaushik, Mukesh Kumar Singh, who are our Joint General Secretaries, who are from outside. Then we have Mr. Maratha, who is our Treasurer, Mr. Sayed Rehan, Gaurav Aroda from Chandigarh, Madhur Dhingra, Sumant Tudeja, who have all come from outside today to attend this function. Uh, and I like to thank our awardees, the distinguished awardees who graced us by their presence because this program would not have been if they were not here. So thank you so much for coming here, giving us the occasion to give you the recognition and to inspire us. We all learned so much and gave us the confidence that if they can, from the humble beginning that they talked about, they can make it, we all can make it. Students who are there, who are learning, who are aspiring to become uh, lawyers, judges, for them, they are our role models, we are inspired by them. Just a side note, as Bar Association gives recognition, and last year, as Anandita read out, Mr. R. Venkini Raman was one of the awardees. So perhaps Bar Association recognized him before he became Attorney General that he had the potential, and ultimately the government recognized it. Uh, I thank you, all of my motivated colleagues, everyone who's here who has inspired us, made this grand success. And no program can be complete without recognizing Sharma ji, S.D. Sharma ji. Huh? He's here? Where is he? I can't see him. Yes. And uh, Saurabh and uh, Subodh and Roshan from his team. I thank you all from the core of my heart. And apologies if I have left out anybody. It was uninten unintentional, not intentional. Thank you so much. Uh, have a very happy weekend. And also our thank you to the media for being here. Uh, now it's time for high tea. Thank you so much. May I request all the awardees to kindly come to the dais so that we can have a group photograph?